so much for sharing that with us. Yeah. With, uh, with just the few minutes that we had left, I wanted to make sure to ask you about, uh, I guess, again, some of the, the, in this case, very much the darker, scarier corners of the Internet. Uh, as we're talking about... You can say creepy, Christy. Yeah, creepy, sure. <laughs> uh, well, things like the, the no-fat movement, uh, things like the involuntarily celibate cultures that we see popping up on 4chan and, and Reddit and these different things. And I guess I'm curious if your research into hot wifing in cuckolding gives you any uh, particular insights or if there's anything you can share with us about why this seems to be such a growing movement. Um, well, it's interesting. There's a little bit of a connection, but it's not, it, it's not really kind of the one that you might think that, you know, the, the incels and some of the alt-right, for instance, they, um, they are really, really triggered by the idea of cuckolding mm-hmm. because they view it as, you know, a, a sign of how weak a man is. Um, you know, the, you know, Tucker Carlson on Fox News, um, like his head exploded when, <laughs> when our research about cuckolding came out a couple of years ago. And it said that, you know, hey, um, cuckolding can be healthy and positive for some couples. And, and he was just like, oh my God, you know, the, the, the end times are here. Um, he says that about everything, though. <laughs> well, if you can't well, call yeah, somebody a beta cuck snowflake, then how are you going to insult them properly? It's true. Uh, yeah, that's right. Right. Um, the thing, the thing is that you know, cuckolds, um, they're actually kind of in touch with their sexuality. Um, it is these people who are slinging um, these threats and these fears and these panic kind of algorithms around. Um, they are really, really afraid of their sexuality. They are deeply ashamed of their sexuality. Um, and they don't know what to do with that. Um, you know, I uh, I taped an episode for The Daily Show that hasn't aired yet, and it's about, you know, the alt-right's, uh, you know, fascination with, with trying to shame and suppress masturbation. And the basic premise of that piece and the premise of, of some interesting arguments is that by making people afraid of their sexuality, by making people hate themselves for having sexual thoughts, we increase the degree to which we can manipulate them and we can exert authoritarian control over their thinking. There's this remarkable research from uh, Israel by a, a researcher named Yaniv Afrati, and um, he, he did this neat, neat study where he looked at highly orthodox religious people and showed that the stronger their religious beliefs, the more they try to suppress thoughts of sex and masturbation. And the harder they work to make those thoughts go away, the stronger the thoughts become, the yep. more frequent they become. And then, of course, the person hates themselves more and they feel like they're an awful, immoral, you know, um, doomed kind of person because they're having these thoughts that they view as immoral. And what's interesting is that you see all of these groups and incels, um, alt right, on, you know, on, on, online. These, you know, th- these folks that are just so angry about sexuality and the no fat movement, especially where they are trying to get people to obsess about not masturbating. And then they're surprised when it doesn't work and the guys end up masturbating. Gee, that's how psychology works. Um, but by doing so, they they are energizing you know the, this very thing that we are you know that that these guys are struggling with um, and I, and I see a lot of I see a lot of guys who've gone to the no fat movement and they've kind of tried it and they end up hating themselves and feeling ashamed and what I say is is similar to what I just said with your caller is you know. Let's focus on the things you want more of in your life. Let's energize those things rather than hating these things that we can't do a damn thing about. Yeah, I, I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't point out that, you know, this show and, and everything that we're doing here 
kind of all started uh, with Dr. Ray's The God Virus, which yeah. really spends a lot of time driving this point home, particularly looking at, at Catholicism and some older traditions and the way that sexual shame is such a important tool of control. Uh, and I, I'd never really heard anybody make that comparison to sort of these more modern uh, ideas of, of sex addiction and uh, no fap and, and all of this. Oh, yeah. No, I was like, this all sounds very familiar to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because Daryl, um, you know, I did his his podcast, you know, several years ago, and I think that we met because I had a Google search, you know, set up for the myth of sex addiction. That was my second book, and he did a presentation that was called the myth of sex addiction, and. And I wrote him, and I was like, hey, dude, what's up? Why are you using my title? <laughs> and he sent me the presentation, and he had included you know, a reference to my book in it. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe you're all right then. <laughs> and then we got to know each other. Yeah, well, glad to hear it. I really do appreciate you taking the time to to call in with us. I apologize for some of the technical issues that we're up against, but so glad to have